Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria and... Todd of Todd's Workshop. So, welcome Todd. Uh, you've got something quite special uh, to show us today, haven't you? What is this? Uh, this is a balustrino, uh, also known as an assassin's crossbow. Right. Uh, we'll come to that. So, balustrino, it's Italian for little crossbow, little basically, crossbow. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it is a crossbow, it's little. Is um, it an assassin's crossbow? Ah, well, so... As far as I know, they were never called that at the time. Yeah. Um, there are very, very few, if any, accounts of them being used. I've heard about an account of the son of the Doge of Venice shooting passers-by out of his bedroom window. Lovely. Mm. <laughs> uh, whether he did or not, I don't know. Um, right. It was just a friend of mine who said that he'd read it. Uh, never got to the bottom of where the context was. Um, <clears throat> what they are is a, a small breed of crossbows from around about 1600, give or take a little bit. So in the age of gunpowder, which is quite important. Mm. They're all loaded by a screw jack of some kind. So okay. what happens is you've got a screw jack built in and a trigger block here. And you've got a little rotating nut, very similar to a uh, sort of a large size system. So it's a steel steel bow, just steel like a bow. normal... This one is uh, 212 pounds in draw weight. Wow. Um, so it, it's heavy. That's that's a lot of a lot of power in a small bit of metal, isn't it? It, it is, yes. I mean, it's twenty five centimeters, ten inches across. So what you did there was you you undid something so you could slide forward essentially the what's kind of like the breech. <laughs> yes, kind of. So uh, it's the whole trigger system is here, and so well actually I'll talk you through it. So basically the nut is held back by a little lever there, and so when you put the string on here, nothing can okay. rotate. It holds the string. You pull that back, and the system. Releases. So that's the trigger. That's so the trigger. So it's a thumb trigger. Th that's important because if the trigger was underneath, like this is just a carrying hook. Okay. If the trigger was underneath, then because of the weight of it, yeah, it, it becomes an awkward. You'd accidentally you'd discharge accidentally it. it yeah. So if the trigger's on top, you can hold it, and then you can okay. do. You can shoot it. As Does that make it difficult to aim? It's or do not, you not it's really? Not an it's just a kind of point and shoot yes. kind of. Yeah. It's a point and shoot very much. So you just make sure that the nut is in the right position. Set the trigger into position, there, and then you just crank it up. Now, in the early stages, of course, it doesn't take much effort. Right. Um, as you get towards the end, it takes <laughs> considerably more, because 212 pounds is, is not to be messed So with. it is slow to load. It's really a single-shot yes, weapon, isn't it? It, it, it is. If you were using it in, in combat, but that's not necessarily what it was for. But we don't know. But we don't know. But the, I think there are some clues in it. One, it takes a while to load. Hmm. Uh, the other is that this is a fairly plain version. Um, usually they're really ornate, they're incredibly sculpted, they've got gilding all over them, engraving. They're expensive objects. Mm. Would an assassin want an object like that? Is there any need for it? No, there isn't. It's the age of gunpowder. Well, you can shoot people, can't you, a lot, a lot more reliably than this is going to do the job. Uh, the other is that if you are in Genoa or somewhere like that, you've got your bow, how long is it going to take you to track down the jeweller that engraved it, the crossbow maker that made it, you know, there's it's not too very much covert, of a, it's is it? It's not very covert. No, no. There's too much of a trail by the very existence of what it is. Um, whereas if you compare that as an example to a dagger, well, you know, daggers come from everywhere. Yeah. There are not many people who are going to be making these. So you're, you're just leaving a trail of evidence that can be found. Um, so my gut reaction is that. The other thing is that you've got a bolt here. Um, very dinky little bolt. I think in, I think mm. maybe people might have thought an assassin's weapon because it's small and concealable, and it's quieter than a pistol. Yeah. And I, I suppose if you were going to attack someone with the intent of stabbing them to death or whatever, then you could maybe harm them or disable them or distract them. It's a bit like I suppose a ninja's throwing star, shuriken yeah. kind of thing, isn't it? I suppose you could put one of these bolts into them as you go in to stab them, as a way of trying to get the jump on them, I suppose, if you thought they were a formidable yes. opponent. Yes, you could. I so mean, one of these to the face. Yeah, yeah, one of these to the face is going to yeah, yeah, yeah. Really it's, distract you slightly, wouldn't it? Um, it is. <laughs> well, we can see. We'll, see. we'll Who see knows? what it does. We're not going to shoot anyone in the face, though. We're gonna, no. We've got a target here, which is, uh, and, it's all, and I'm going to stand out of the way. Right. So it's a standard straw boss. Um, the bolt is 8mm diameter, weighs, I think from memory, 7 grams or 9 grams. It's not pretty heavy. Wow, okay, that's pretty deep into the target actually, isn't it? Can yeah. I try and pull Yeah, yeah, that pull, out? pull it out, I'll reload and you can have a shot. So, I know, obviously I've done archery for many years, I know how high 
hard these targets are. If you tried to physically push an arrow into one of these targets, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> it's difficult, okay? These these are pretty uh, hard, especially when like this is a relatively, yeah, it's, it's not yeah. one that's been shot a lot. They soften up with. Um, that is, yeah, okay. So it was about that deep into a fairly hard target. That's harder than flesh is. Um, and I would say in terms of penetration depth, I think you probably, in someone's body, expect slightly more than that, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, you would, yeah. Um, and in fairness, this is a cylindrical uh, point. With certain other types of point, you could probably get great penetration, yeah. couldn't you, if you had a, a square section of or something. Or something. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's certainly going to do someone quite some mm. harm, yeah. isn't it? Have a shot. Um, oh, scary. So right. you're all set up, ready to go. Right, so that goes nice. on that way. Yep. Yeah. So let's have a look. So I keep pointing in the right direction. And then, so it's all thumb based. Yeah, so I'm aiming at the centre of the target. Ah, so it goes quite high, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, most crossbows do shoot high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a fair. That's a... So that basically <laughs> has gone in the depth of the head. Yeah. So I could just about see the back of the socket sticking out. So what, that's about an inch and a yeah, bit, isn't inch, it? Inch, 25 mil. Um, so that's clearly going to injure someone. Yeah. Uh, what do you think these were for? I think they were executive toys. Okay. That's, that's what I think. They like were. the desk trebuchet. Like the, the desk trebuchet. <laughs> and there's um, <clears throat> a fantastic, I think it's described as an after dinner archery set, which is, a, <laughs> uh, it's up in the Royal Armouries again. Um, and it is a beautiful Japanese lacquered box with a, a Japanese bow in it, which breaks in the middle. So the two sides slide together. Oh, wow. And the whole thing's about that long. The whole bow's about that long. And the box is like this. And yeah. it's got a little rack of all the beautiful little arrows. Oh. And, <laughs> and it's described as an after dinner archery set. Yeah. And, and you can imagine you're sitting there drinking your sake in their case and you just line up your little target and you sit there over the dinner table yeah and i think about i think that's probably right and it's you know when you scale down a crossbow despite the fact that that's 200 and something pounds um draw it is still a small bow with a very short power stroke isn't it that's, that's what it is so you're getting although it's people think about poundage it's also about power stroke it's about you know what distance yeah. and time is that is that energy being put into that Small poundage, projectile. poundage means nothing, and, it, mm. and it's just like when you go to the big windlass bows at twelve hundred pounds or a thousand pounds or something. Yeah, yeah it's great big numbers, mm. but the point is the the small number is the draw is the uh, power stroke, the distance that you shoot. Which in that case over. might be what five five six six inches. inches yeah. yeah, and and so the thing is, yes, that's compared to a bow, which it might be twenty something inches. Yeah, twenty two, yeah. twenty four. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so yeah, and it also quite a light projectile. So. Absolutely, it's a it's a missile weapon that shoots a projectile with a pointy tip. Yes, you could hurt people with it. You might be able to um, really nastily hurt someone with it. Well, I think the obvious one that we haven't talked about is poison, and these yes. were popular in Spain and Italy, mm. as was poison. Mm. So it's it's conceivable, but I just don't get it. Mm. You know? Mm. Um, and yeah, so so uh, the jury's out basically, isn't it? It doesn't mm. seem like it's necessarily a weapon. It doesn't seem like it would be an assassin's weapon. Mm. It seems like it could be a not a toy weapon, but maybe a sort of you know a, a, a gimmick. I, I don't want to use the word gimmick, but a but a an executive toy. Yeah, in exactly violence. that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not a child's thing because it takes too much work to do. That's true. Yeah. That's that's a very <coughs> good point actually. That it does require a certain amount of strength just yeah. to load it, doesn't it? Mm. Uh, and clearly a very expensive and expertly made. I mean, you just think about making, you know, if you've done some metal work, you've done some filing, think about making a screw thread, mm. okay? I mean, that's that's an inherent part of that machine, isn't it? Yeah. That it has to have a good quality. And that's not a simple thing to make. Not that back takes, in those days. No, it no. takes a lot of um, mm. skill and, uh, in some cases, machinery to make. Uh, and the bow itself is, a, you know, has to be a good quality piece of steel. Mm. Um, we've spoken in the past about bows on crossbows and the fact that, um, you know, the potential of them breaking and that kind of stuff when they're under stress. Um, so, so yeah, it's a very expertly m mm. made piece of gear. And you're the only person that I know of who's well known for making these, actually. Mm. Um, you must like making these as as, as engineering challenges. Yes, I, I do. I like the I like the mechanisms. Yeah. And um, I like the fact that they're completely metal as well, because that's mm. quite unusual for this time, isn't it? Yeah. Because most things have some organic. Okay, we've got a string on there, yeah. but but it's it's quite 
within the context of its time, it's a very unusual looking thing. It almost looks alien. It almost looks like something out of a, you know, it's kind of yeah, 60s yeah. sci-fi movie, doesn't it? It's quite... I know what you mean. It's not, it's not what you'd expect no, they would have. No, I think it's a, a lovely thing. Um, so, we don't, to conclude, we don't really know who they were made for and what they were made for. Okay. But they are lovely little things, and if you really, really want one, then Todd's the person to come to to get one from. Mm. And they do look like a lot of fun as well. Yeah, they are good. I'll, I'll show you against wood as well, yeah. actually. So oh, yeah. <coughs> sometimes they bounce out, but we'll, we'll just I'll see stand well we clear. Um, oh, I did. It just it hit just at the bottom, actually, of the thing. We'll give it another go. Yeah, they, they are good. They are good fun. Um, no, the only... The real problem is... Uh, Comes tiresome. Um, sorry. The loading. No, the the fettling. That what you do is you you put it together and you check the trigger system and then you got to take it all apart. You fire a little oh, tiny bit off. You put it back together. You test uh, it. You you know it goes on and on. I imagine that was um, the case with uh, locks on firearms as well. Oh, getting the, sure. Yeah. But uh, also any any of those sort of, sort of things. You know, before the day of days of computers, you don't really know what you're going to get. You know. Let's just see if we can get that again. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's no, there's no disputing the fact that that's, um, that is going to hurt a lot. Yeah. It's not, it, it's not, it's not a toy. It's not a toy, but interestingly, I don't know what the powers of air guns are in other parts of the world. Mm. Um, but the air guns in, in the UK, an air rifle is limited to 12 foot pounds in power, which is from memory about 15 joules. Mm. Um, this is coming out at four foot pounds. So right. this is one third of the power of a, a regulation air rifle in this country. Although importantly it's a very different type of projectile <clears throat> because this weighs a lot more than a lead pellet. Exactly. It doesn't squish yeah. and it's got a sharp steel point on the front. Exactly, so. it, it comes down to momentum, it's got yeah. a lot more. Yeah. It's got a yeah. lot more and that, and that shows in what it's doing on the target actually. Yeah. Yeah. That it's not just about energy, it's about the momentum of the projectile. I think one thing we uh, didn't necessarily discuss as well is some people might go hunting. Could it be anything to do with hunting? I don't exactly. personally think so because the, the level of accuracy snail is hunting? just... <laughs> no, yeah, yes. it's hunting snails. Um, uh, a large boot, I think. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, I don't think... I think accuracy is always prime with hunting, isn't yeah. it? And and Or in some cases, stopping power. So you could look at something like boar hunting. You need mm. something that's going to, as a last-ditch resort, going to protect you this is not it that is not the right <laughs> weapon and equally that is not something you're going to be able to accurately shoot birds yeah. or rabbits or anything else yeah. like that with um which you don't need a lot of power for but you do need accuracy because yeah. you can't get close to them so you need to be able to shoot them from it. so yeah i don't i don't think for that either so yeah i think i think you're right i think it's essentially um it's a it's a posh toy for someone to um shoot targets with probably yeah, yeah. I think it is. But it's a lovely thing. Anyway, thank you very much for showing us your little balustrino, Todd. <laughs> and um, we'll, uh, we'll see you for another video uh, soon, I hope. I and hope so. thank you. Thank you very much, Matt. Cheers.